How are students going to know multiplication facts, which they need for this content descriptor, if at no stage have they been asked to memorise number facts? I think this is a mistake. It's internally inconsistent because the number facts were not being taught in Year 3 and Year 4. We can't really expect students to know them in Year 6. Today, teachers, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Professor Pete's Classroom. In this video, I'm going to review the consultation curriculum for mathematics for year six, which is proposed to begin in 2022. So I'm going to try to try to cover this fairly quickly. Some of the other videos got a little bit long, um, so I'm going to speed through it. You can download copies of the files that I'm using here using the link below this video if that's helpful to you. Looking at an overview of the Year 6 curriculum, we can see the previous version of the curriculum, the current curriculum, had 27 content descriptors. The new one has 25. They've been rearranged a little. The sub-strands have disappeared, so we just have the six main strands in the new proposed curriculum. But other than that, there's really not much to say. I'm going to give an executive summary using this slide. Um, it's just a, a brief summary of what I think of the Year 6 curriculum. The biggest change is there's greater detail devoted to describing content descriptors. This was also especially obvious in the case of the Year 5 curriculum, and I was quite, I was very pleased. I was quite complimentary of the processes and the, the, the writing of the content descriptors. I think they've done a wonderful job. I'm looking forward to reviewing the Year 6 content descriptors and also, um, also. And there is a greater emphasis on analysis of patterns. Perhaps not a major topic, but patterns is a theme, if you like, that's in the new curriculum that's got quite a lot of airplay. The biggest gap in terms of what's been removed, there's a few small topics that feels like they're cherry-picked, but anyway, they're just um, subtopics, as it were, for example, square and triangular numbers, mental and written strategies, connection of volume and capacity, and constructing pyramids. So some, my, some of those are quite minor, obviously. And the summary overall is that it is largely unchanged. There is a bigger focus on modeling and problem solving, and there are expanded content descriptors in statistics. I actually think it's probably across the board that there are expanded content descriptors, but in statistics, that's true of all the year levels. So I'm going to go through the content descriptors one by one in the order in which they're presented. So here we go, and I'm, I'm going to focus on the new one rather than the old one. So you can see on the slide what has been removed, but I'm going to focus on the new content. So the first content descriptor for number for year six, so it's labeled 6N01, has this text. Recognize everyday situations that use integers, including financial contexts. Locate and represent these numbers on a number line and as coordinates on the Cartesian plane. So the financial context has been added and coordinates on the Cartesian plane has been added. Apart from that, it's pretty much the same. The second one has identified and described the properties of prime and composite numbers and used to solve problems and simplify calculations. As I said, square and triangular numbers have disappeared. I think that was a shame. Knowing what the square numbers are is important and knowing triangular numbers is an interesting topic as well. It leads into algebra. However, it's uh, no longer there. And the addition of solving problems and simplifying calculations is a good one. The third content descriptor for number is completely new. It does not have an equivalent in the existing curriculum. That's why there's nothing there on the left. So this new content descriptor says, use estimation strategies appropriate to the context, including financial contexts, to approximate numerical solutions to problems involving rational numbers and percentages, including substituting easier values into calculations to obtain an approximate solution. There's lots and lots of detail here, lots of opportunities for good learning activities. I really like it. The fourth one states, apply knowledge of equivalence to compare, order, locate, and represent common unit fractions and their multiples, including halves, thirds, and quarters on the same number line and justify their order. 
So it's understanding of fractions, locating them on a number line, having an idea of how large fractions are. I like this content descriptor. There's lots of detail and, uh, and I think teachers will find it useful. Moving on, we come to number five. Connect and use equivalent forms of rational numbers to solve problems that require, and then the rest of the text is the same as before. Finding a familiar fraction or percentage of a quantity, including percentage discounts of 10, 25, and 50%. Choose efficient strategies using digital tools where appropriate. So little has changed here, and this is another worthwhile content descriptor. Looking at number six, this is almost identical as you can see. Solve problems involving addition and subtraction of fractions with related denominators using knowledge of equivalent fractions. So that's good. Number seven, apply knowledge of place value to add and subtract decimals using digital tools where appropriate and use estimation and rounding to check the reasonableness of answers. Again, hardly anything has changed. It mentions place value, which is important, so I'm pleased to see that added. Number eight, apply knowledge of place value and multiplication facts to multiply and divide decimals by natural numbers using efficient strategies and appropriate digital tools. Use estimation and rounding to check the reasonableness of answers. This is a worthwhile revision of this content descriptor. Um, there's some blue text that indicates new content has been added to clarify what's being asked of students and teachers. One interesting thing here is apply knowledge of place value and multiplication facts. This is interesting because it implies, of course, that year sixes will have a knowledge of multiplication facts, whereas in year three and year four, the requirement that students memorize number facts in multiplication has been removed. So it would be worthwhile asking the question, how are students going to know multiplication facts, which they need for this content descriptor, if at no stage have they been asked to memorize number facts? I think this is a mistake. Um, it's internally inconsistent, you could say, because the number facts were not being taught in year three and year four, we can't really expect students to know them in year six. I think all of this is fixed by putting in the number, the memorization of number facts back into year three and year four. I've said a lot on that topic in the uh, relevant video, so I'm not gonna go over the arguments again here. Just suffice it to say that it sort of implies that somebody on the curriculum writing team thought that students should know multiplication facts. And since this document needs to be consistent right across the board, someone needs to go in and revise it and uh, fix the apparent anomaly that we see here. All right, number nine. <clears throat> Model situations, including financial context, by identifying and describing a mathematical problem and formulating expressions using combinations of all four operations and brackets as appropriate. Choose efficient strategies using digital tools where appropriate. Justify choices and explain results in terms of the situation. This is a great content descriptor. It's got lots and lots of detail for the um, aspects of knowledge that the students will be learning, like identifying and describing a problem, formulating expressions, using combinations of operations. This is well written. This reminds me that the language is similar to that used in the year five uh, curriculum, so I suspect that some of the same team members have been working on both of them. And the final slide for the number content descriptors shows um, an old one in the existing curriculum which has been removed, and that was multiply and divide decimals by powers of 10. I thought that was a nice topic, it's a nice easy way to explore the properties of decimal fractions and what happens when you multiply and divide by powers of 10, but be that as it may, it's been removed. So I personally would prefer to see that left in there, but curriculum writers have decided to remove it. Let's look at algebra. The first content descriptor states, continue and create extended number sequences involving natural numbers, fractions and decimals using digital tools to assist where appropriate. Describe the rule used to create the sequence and explain emerging patterns. 
That explaining emerging patterns is repeated quite a few times in the proposed new curriculum. Uh, this has been added to a little bit to make it clearer. Um, basically, I like this content descriptor. Number two is completely new. It doesn't exist in the old curriculum. So we have recognized and distinguished between patterns growing additively and multiplicatively and connect patterns in one context to a pattern of the same form in another context. This is quite nice. There's um, an aspect of patterns which can be taught to students and it's being referenced here is that you can have a pattern in one context that is repeated in a different context with different elements basically. Number three says explore the use of brackets in order of operations to write number sentences. That's taken straight from the previous curriculum. And then added to that is construct equivalent number sentences involving brackets and combinations of the four operations and use the properties of numbers and operations to determine unknown answers. That's great. There's a lot more detail in this um, and I think they've done a good job. The fourth algebra content descriptor, the final one, again is completely new. It didn't exist in the old curriculum. Use function machines. That's the first time we've heard of that and I think that's appropriate for year six. And rules to generate sets of numbers and apply computational thinking to recognize, interpret and explain emerging patterns. This is a great introduction to this idea um, of functions prior to students going into high school. So I think that's a great um, addition to the curriculum. We're now going to look at measurement. The first content descriptor says convert between common metric units of length, mass and capacity and other standard units of measurement relevant to the context of a problem. Use and convert decimal representations of metric measurements where appropriate. This is good. It used, this used to be two content descriptors, so it's been combined to make one. Um, they've kept the same attributes. There's been, been some movement in the curriculum as to where the attributes being measured are located in the curriculum. Um, this has been kept the same. And it mentions other standard units of measurement. This implies other than metric units. So I guess this is looking at contexts where other units are used. We don't use them very much in Australia, but uh, there are a few places where non-metric units are used. So it's appropriate for students to be familiar with those. Number two, establish the formula for the area of a rectangle and use to solve practical problems. The old one referred to comparison of lengths and areas. The lengths part has gone so this is just looking at area and it's establishing the formula for the area, which is a, a very, very useful addition in this new proposed curriculum. Number three states interpret and use timetables, which is straight from the old curriculum and itineraries to plan activities and determine the duration of events and journeys. That was sort of implied by the previous content descriptor. It's good to see that it's now stated uh, explicitly. The fourth one states recognize the relationships between angles on a straight line, angles at a point and vertically opposite angles. Use the results to find unknown angles and solve practical problems communicating reasoning. This is good. It's almost the same as the old one. There's a little bit more detail. What's been removed is with and without digital technologies. Um, I've made several comments about this. I think it's it's preferable to let teachers decide when they will use digital tools and when they won't rather than stipulating when they are expected to be used and with and without digital technologies isn't really necessary in this content descriptor. I think it's far better as I said to let teachers make that judgment when they're teaching topics where there is uh, uh, the opportunity to use technology. The last Content descriptor for measurement has not appeared in the new one. It was connect volume and capacity to their units of measurement in the old curriculum. I am sorry to see this go. I think volume and capacity are two very important attributes and knowing the difference between the two and how their units are applied is important. I'm hoping that this appears in later years of the curriculum. So 
Um, I'm not familiar with the curriculum beyond year six, but um, let's hope that that's where that, that has been moved to. Let's move on to space. So these have the SP code. The first one um, really only retains one word out of the old one, which is prisms. It used to be construct simple prisms and pyramids. The pyramids are gone. And apparently constructing prisms has gone as well, and it's been changed to compare the parallel cross-sections of objects and recognize their relationship to prisms. That's an interesting topic. I don't see why students shouldn't be asked to construct prisms, but the new content is um, a nice addition to what's there already. The second space content descriptor says use the four quadrants of a Cartesian coordinate system to locate points in the plane. Investigate and describe changes to the coordinates when a point is moved to a different position in the plane. This is well done. I like it. It's not just locating points, but what happens when you move in a particular direction? What happens to the coordinates? So that's, that's good to see, and I think that students will enjoy learning about points on a Cartesian plane. I hope they will anyway. Space number three. Recognize and use combinations of transformations to create tessellations and other geometric patterns using dynamic geometric software where appropriate. This is quite similar to the one that was there before. It doesn't list the transformations, which is interesting. The old one mentioned translations, reflections and rotations. Um, so I guess this is open-ended to some extent and creating tessellations is new content, which is a good idea, so I like this one. The final, the fourth and final space content descriptor um, doesn't appear in the old curriculum, so this is all new, and we have used computational thinking and reasoning to make conjectures about and experiment with transformations of shapes within the plane. This is nice, I like to see transformations within the plane expanded. It was always a little bit light on in the previous version of the curriculum. So this is a nice addition um, to what is proposed. We'll move on to probability. This has a 6P code, of course, for year six. The first part of this new content descriptor has come from the, the old year five curriculum. Recognize that, that probabilities lie on numerical scale 0 to 1, and then it adds 0% to 100%. That's nice. Use observations and experience to assign probabilities that events occur in a given context using fractions, percentages, and decimals to indicate their estimated likelihood. It's combined two old um, previous content descriptors, which is quite appropriate in this case, I think and the extra detail is very welcome. The second content descriptor, this is also combining two previous content descriptors, has conduct repeated chance experiments and run sim simulations with a large number of trials using digital tools. Use computational thinking to compare observed frequencies across experiments with expected frequencies and explain emerging patterns. There we have the patterns appearing again. Again, this has been clarified. There's more detail. I like it, and I don't think it requires any more comment. We're almost at the end. We're looking at statistics. There are three content descriptors, as there are in most year levels. This first one hasn't been changed much at all from the previous version. Interpret and compare a range of displays or visualizations, including side-by-side -side column graphs for two categorical var variables. It's almost identical, it's just added visualizations, which is a good thing. The second one is basically completely new. It's similar to a content descriptor in the previous version, but I've put the text all in blue because it's basically new, uh, a new way of describing it. And we have identified statistically informed arguments presented in traditional and digital media, discuss and critique methods, data representations, and conclusions. This is adding a whole new category, if you like, of activities and questions that teachers can ask students about using statistics to inform arguments. And 
looking at it in terms of how it's presented in traditional media and digital media and to critique the way data is used. These are all very powerful topics um, and very useful topics. I think one of the purposes of teaching mathematics is to have students informed so that they can critique arguments that are proposed to us. So um, I'm in fully in favour of this content descriptor. The last one, it's a long one. It's new content. It, it doesn't have an equivalent in the old curriculum. So here we go. It states, plan and conduct statistical investigations by posing and refining investigative questions, collecting and recording sample sets of categorical or discrete numerical data using digital tools, including spreadsheets. Interpret and analyze the data and communicate findings within the context. This is well done. This is um, a very worthwhile set of, of statements about learning in the, the area of statistics. And there's lots of detail to inform the way a teacher puts together activities and questions in assessment and so on. So this is well done. I commend this to teachers. So we've reached the end. This is... Um, fairly uncontroversial, I would say. There are little things that I've mentioned that I think, well, you could have put that back in, you might not have taken that out. Um, but by and large, I like this new proposed curriculum for year six. There's lots of useful extra content. There's better descriptions of what teachers are teaching and learners are learning. And I think the, the writers have done a good job. I find certain topics in year three and year four especially to be controversial in terms of removing the recall of number facts, telling the time has been taken out of year one and out of year three, which is a little strange. There's a few little things like that, but by and large, I like the new curriculum and this one for year six, I think is, as I said, relatively uncontroversial and teachers should enjoy having... Um, a clearer description of what they're teaching and what the students are learning. So basically it gets a big green tick from me. I like it. Hope this video has been useful to you. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a like. Tell me what you think. If there's any area that I've mentioned that you disagree with or you agree with, then feel free to make a comment. And should you be interested in further videos like this, then tick the subscribe button and that will get you notifications of when new videos are released. That's it for me. I've reached the end. This has been a series of seven videos looking at each of the year level curricula in turn. So I'm pleased to get to the end of it. I'm going to now add other videos in this series to um, promote the idea of teachers having a say in what's in the new curriculum. I, th I hope that you will put your hand up and um, make a contribution to the discussion about the curriculum and uh, let Akara know what you think of the changes that are proposed. Of course, if you don't speak up, then it doesn't give you much of a chance to criticise what is required of teachers in the future. So um, I, I strongly recommend that you do have, a, have your say and add to the ongoing discussion. But you don't have very long. It's only um, just a few weeks now before the 8th of July when contributions and um, comments are closed off. That's it for this video. I've enjoyed talking to you. I hope you have found it useful and I look forward to talking to you again in the near future. Bye.